Good morning, everyone. So today we are going to start a new chapter, network flow. Let's see this example. So let's say there is a place, the green place and a red place, and we want to transport oil or any other thing from one place to the other and there are the pipes with the capacity so you can see the capacity in liters the question is that how much gas or oil can be sent from one place to the other yes because there are many possibilities for example till this place you can reach with six you can reach with eight liters but then you are stuck because only 6 liters can go forward. So similarly, we do not know that what could be the maximum value. <clears throat> Even this problem is very relevant from the Second World War. So the problem was like this that it, it reported in 1950 where the US wanted to know how quickly the Soviet Union could get supplies through its rail network to its satellite states in Eastern Europe. So one question is that how quickly or how much what could be the maximum value but at the same time the problem is US wanted to know which rails it could destroy most easily to cut off the satellite states from rest of the Soviet Union. It means that there are two kind of the problem one is the maximum flow problem where what could be the maximum flow which can reach from one place to the other using the rail networks. The other problem is that what could be the least number of the networks that we should destroy so that there is no connection between the two places. Okay, so we are going to see these problems with the mathematical eyes now. So let us consider this example. Yes, it's a directed graph. The question is what could be the maximum flow from S to T. Please do try it by yourself. Very interesting question. I am going to discuss many possibilities. But one of the most obvious choice is that you can send 20 here. Then you can send 20 here because 30 is the capacity. So 20 can be sent. And 20 is the capacity. So 20 can be sent. And the flow can be 20. But we do not know it is a maximum or not. So please do try. The other possibility is that if I redraw it here. So this is 1, this is 2, this is S and this is T. So the other possibility is that you send 20 here. So 20 is the capacity. So all 20 you send here. Out of this 20 you send 10 through this pipe and 10 through this pipe yes from s to 2 10 is the capacity so you send all 10 here and now 2 to t the capacity is 20 so 10 is coming from 1 to 2 and 10 is coming from s to 2 so 20 can easily reach so now you can see that in this case the flow is 30 so now the mathematical problem is that how do we know what is the maximum flow and from the computer science of point of view, you can see that what should be the algorithm which can give us the maximum flow. So we are going to see the answer to both of these questions in today's class. So these are the examples 20 and 30. So first let's define mathematically that what is a flow network we have to model the problem which we have discussed using mathematically and then we will propose its solution so a flow network is a connected directed graph where each edge has a known negative capacity so each edge is weighted it has a capacity s is a source t is a sink no edge can enter to the source so if this is the source then this is not allowed incoming edge is not allowed to source and outgoing edge is not allowed to the sink so this is one of the example of a flow network then how do we define a flow so flow is defined from s to t so s t flow is a function from the set of the edges to the real numbers 
where we assign a real number to each edge so it is denoted as f of e so let's see the example the black the numbers in the black and the black edges represent the given network flow and then these red edges with the red number represents the flow so capacities are in the black and flow is in the red so now to to guarantee the existence of a solution first we need to impose some constraint to the network so the first obvious constraint is that the flow cannot exceed the capacity it does not make any sense but the more important is that except source and sink the flow coming in to any vertex this is the v so flow coming in to a vertex is always equal to the flow going out again it makes sense for example to vertex 2 if the flow coming in you make 30 and then outgoing is only 20 then where will this 10 liter would go so pipeline is blocked so therefore if 30 is reaching to any vertex then 30 should go out of that vertex something like this so this is a vertex v 13 the amount 13 10 plus 3 is coming into v and therefore 13 should go out of v you can see any example which we have discussed for example in this case there is a vertex 1 where flow 20 is coming in and you can see that flow 20 is going out of it for vertex 2 again 20 is coming in and 20 is going out and now once we have introduced the concept of the flow the value of the flow is the amount of the flow which is going out of s which is equal to the amount of the flow coming into t yes we are not saying that this is the maximum flow or minimum flow simply a flow so if you make a flow if you introduce the flow to every edge then the value of the flow is amount of the flow going out of so in this case you can see this is s and the flow 20 is going out of it so therefore the value of the flow is 20 here similarly in the other case you can see this 20 is going out 20 is here and 10 is also going out so 20 plus 10 30 where same 30 is coming in into t okay so now comes the algorithm now to find the maximum flow there is no such algorithm that in one step you reach to the maximum flow and many time when the problem is of optimality where you do not know what could be the maximum flow so the best possible choice is that you start with some initial flow and try to keep augmenting it until there is no choice to augment it and then we should devise a method to know that that now there is no way to augment it or what is the way to augment it all these things we are going to see in the algorithm which we are going to discuss now so before that let's introduce two concept one is augmenting path and the other one is the residual graph now what is a residual graph so in the residual graph what we do is that initially there is a flow network where there is some flow for example the value of the flow is 20 then for each edge so let's say this is the edge uv where the capacity is 17 and flow is 6 so you draw another graph which we call the residual graph where you replace each edge as follows so u to v 17 minus 6 because 6 has already been passed out so now its capacity get reduced so capacity is 17 minus 6 which is 11 and 6 flow which has already been passed out so you add a reverse edge and make it 6 why it has been done we will discuss but first let's see how to draw a residual graph so you can see that u to v it's 11 and v to u it's 6 so if f e is less than c e which is always true 
or it can be equal then in the residual graph which is denoted as gf you update the capacity as ce minus fe but at the same time you add a reverse edge from v to u with capacity fe fe is now representing the capacity in the residual graph yes let's draw an example so let us consider this is the graph please do try to draw its residual graph i am also drawing it but since it's easy you can quickly draw it by yourself so s to u the capacity is 20 and flow is 20 so 20 minus 20 it's zero so there is no point in drawing an edge with weight zero it should be greater than zero but flow is 20 so there is a reverse edge with weight 20 here from u to v 30 minus 20 which is 10 but then there is a reverse edge with weight 20 s to v undisturbed so 10 remains 10 from v to t capacity is 20 flow is 20 so 20 minus 20 0 and then the reverse edge with capacity 20 and v and from u to t it is 10 so this is the required residual graph for the given flow okay the next concept is augmenting path so an st path in gf so in the residual graph any path from s to t is an augmenting path any path yes and once there is an augmenting path then what you do in this augmenting path you can always choose the minimum value which represents the minimum flow which can pass from s to t and this helps us to augment the flow in each step it would be clear once we do an example okay so i can go uh i can start from here and so let's consider this was the initial case 30 20 20 s t 1 and 2 yes this is 10 and this is 20 so at the first step i am explaining now the concept of residual graph as well as the augmenting path and the algorithm which we are going to discuss through this example so at the first stage g is equal to gf which means the graph which is given to us or the flow network flow which is given to us is the initial residual graph now in this graph you just need to identify any path from s to t just to minimize the steps of the algorithm we try to choose the path having the least having the maximum flow so for example if i move from s to 1 1 to t then the flow can be 10 only but if i move from this one is 10 if i move from s to 2 2 to t again it can be 10 but i can choose to move from s to 1 1 to 2 and 2 to t yes so this is an augmenting path there is a path all three are the augmenting path i can choose any one of them so let's i choose s to 1 1 to 2 2 to t so how do i update the graph so s to 1 i send 20 flow so 20 out of 20 then 30 out of 20 here 10 remains 10 10 remains 10 and 20 out of 20 this is my updated g and you can see that i followed the path which is suggested by the residual graph again i make the residual graph for this one so when i make the residual graph then this is 10 this is 30 minus 20 
which is 10 and this is 20 then this is 10 and this is 20 again I have to see an augmenting path so only possible choice is from s I cannot go to 1 there is no way so from s I have to go to 2 then from 2 I cannot go to t plot so from 2 there is a path in the residual graph so from 2 I can go to 1 and then from 1 I can go to t this is how I can see there is an augmenting path yes now once we have this augmenting path then I have to use the same path in this graph G I have to update it so to update it I can see this 20 remains 20 but there is a flow this 10 is going here so 10 out of 10 now in this graph in this G you can see that there is an edge from 1 to 2 but there is no edge from 2 to 1 and from 1 to 2 the flow is 20 but the residual graph suggested me that I need a flow from 2 to 1 which means that 2 to 1 I need a flow with value 10 which is equivalent to I need a flow from 1 to 2 with a value minus 10 2 to 1 it's 10 1 to 2 it's minus 10 since the flow is from 1 to 2 in the original graph G so I add a flow minus 10 to this one so 20 minus 10 which is 10 so this becomes 30 and 10 and this becomes 10 out of 10 and this was already 20 out of 20 now you can see that the value becomes 30 and I use the augmenting path which is suggested by the residual graph and now I can again find the residual graph so s this is 20 this is 10 this is 20 and 10 this is 10 and this is 20 so now in the final residual graph you can see there is no path from s to t it means that the flow which we received is the maximum one right now we haven't discussed the correctness that why it is the maximum one but you can see that it makes sense there is no augmenting path and therefore this one is the maximum one so you can see it's a beautiful algorithm where someone has introduced the concept of augmenting path residual graph to find the maximum flow okay so we'll discuss the algorithm in detail if you want you can see these slides by yourself augmenting path we have already discussed this algorithm is known as ford fulkerson algorithm this is how it works that initially the original graph is the residual graph then you compute the augmenting path change the flow and keep building the new residual graph if there exists a augmenting path once there is no augmenting path we are done so this is the exercise which we are going to discuss in the next class. Thank you.